patients suffering serious illnesses and who use medicinal cannabis to relieve their symptoms will now find it easier to get hold of the drug. The state government streamlining the process, meaning patients will only have to wait days rather than months. Brooke Wiley reports. It's the news Lucy Haslam has been waiting for. It's definitely a really positive step. We've been complaining about the, the hurdles at a state level for a very long time. After years of lobbying the government to make cannabis treatments more widely available, today, a breakthrough. Patients are demanding this and they're doing it anyway and we need to make them as safe as possible by putting them through the illegal pathway and through the health system. Tina Clerk is having her second round of chemotherapy for breast cancer. After a debilitating first round of treatment, she hopes medicinal cannabis will bring her some relief. I'm doing everything I can uh, to make this a really good outcome and to reduce the effects of chemo. Under pressure to reduce delays, the government has announced it's streamlining the process. So it's removing the double layer of bureaucracy, which is about as good as it can get. For eligible patients, they'll now only be subjected to federal approval, a move expected to cut waiting times from months to days. It's about making sure that we can just cut out the red tape, take a machete to it. It's a system the federal government wants implemented nationwide. I've written to all of the states encouraging them to adopt a single system. Labor wants cannabis for medicinal purposes decriminalised entirely. There are thousands, probably tens of thousands of people suffering with terminal or other serious conditions in New South Wales who need access to medicinal cannabis but who are forced to access product on the black market. For doctors battling the paperwork for their patients, it's a welcome relief. The previous pathway was inordinately complicated. The new system is expected to be implemented in the coming weeks. Brooke Wiley, ABC News, Sydney.